Madam Chair, uh, I also regret the fact that the Commission and the EAS today are not taking the, the floor, which is not uh, the usual practice, at least in, in DRA. Um, having said that, uh, there's been an, an argument here saying, well, situations of occupation are very different, and we cannot have a single approach. I'm sorry, but this is not the point. Situations of occupation may differ, and they differ indeed, uh, one to another, but there is only one international law. And there are human rights which are, which are holistic and universal. They apply everywhere. So the point simply is that trade cannot be carried out in this regard with human, the human rights uh, situation in the territories where the goods come from. Neither in violation of international law. Trade cannot be an instrument that helps to maintain illegal situations, an instrument which undermines rights such as the right to self-determination, and this is what is happening with EU trade. There is a clear inconsistency when it comes to the EU trade policy in regards to occupied territories, and what we need is a consistent approach which is aligned with international law. In the case of Western Sahara, for instance, the EU acts at odds with international law, as the ECJ has repeatedly stated. And in that sense, uh, let me say that I welcome the European Citizens Initiative, which uh, proposes a ban trade with uh, illegal settlements. And my question to our speakers is, um, what should be the key aspects uh, in your opinion, in an eventual EU legislation in this field, uh, regulating uh, trade or banning trade with uh, um, occupied territories. Thank you. Thank you, Jordi. Uh, we will give the floor two minutes each.